Praise God. Isn't God good? I was watching the congregation as I normally do when I preach, at least I hope I do, to see if people are paying attention to what I'm saying. And uh, I was noticing while our sister was testifying, I really could say amen and take up the cards right now because didn't she preach to us? I said, didn't she preach to us? But the thing about her, she didn't just preach with her words, but she preaches with her actions that you see every day. And it's people like her and you, and I say this sincerely, that make the church what it is. And I thank you today for your giving. I am going to forego protocol. I have tons of stuff to say as normal protocol, but I feel to enter immediately into the preaching of the Word to respect your time. And tonight, if the Lord allows me, I'll do the protocol. Hallelujah. But I feel the Holy Ghost here. Uh, beautiful presentation, Brother Moore. It's not very often that I get to see missionary presentations. Usually I'm preaching and there's not a missionary there, but it's a great honor. Love Brother and Sister Moore, and I'll refer to them in my message. And Brother and Sister Pasley, I will refer to them as well. But uh, may God bless you. Let's raise our hands and ask God what he wants us to do in this service. Lord, I pray right now in the name of Jesus that you will help me to do what you have called me to do today. Lord, I know the message you've given to me and I feel the anointing of the Holy Ghost. I pray, Lord, that I will be able to yield myself to what you want to do. I pray, Lord, that you will bless and anoint every member and visitor that's here today. I pray, God, that you will let us realize that we can make a difference. God, that we can see something done for your kingdom as we have seen. Thank you for this anniversary of 47 years. And I pray, God, that you will bless Calvary Church. I pray that you will anoint us today, God. And I pray more than anything else, for the loss of this world. In Jesus' name, I pray, God, that you would bless and anoint Palestine and Israel right now. I pray, God, that you would help us to reach out to the lost there. And the challenges that we face in doing that are something that I never had to work with as a missionary. But, God, I pray that you will give us wisdom, Lord, in the name of Jesus. But I pray right now, God, for every person that's in this building, for what good does it do us to save Palestine and Israel if there's someone one sitting here today that needs to be saved. God, there's someone here that may be discouraged and they feel like throwing in the towel. I pray, God, right now that you will anoint the preaching of the word and let us lift someone up and give them encouragement. In the name of Jesus, we pray, Lord, in Jesus' name. And everybody said, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. God bless you. You may be seated. It was really one of those days that every pastor detests. Most arrived late, and the service was delayed about an hour. Now, I'm sure that services are never delayed here, but many places I visit in the world, uh, services are delayed. I was in the Solomon Islands two weeks ago, and uh, I think service started probably an hour late, but that's just the way it is because in many cultures of the world, those of us that have lived in other cultures realize that the North American, European, Japanese, Asian concept of time is not the same as here. I remember when I did weddings in El Salvador, I would go to do a wedding. I was a missionary in El Salvador 20 years. You know, it really wasn't me that was important. It really wasn't the groom that was important, but it was the bride that was important. And many times she would get dressed in her house and in the village, she would come out in her wedding dress and they would walk down the street and people came out of their houses and visitors and they would follow her to church where I had sat for two or three hours waiting on the bride. So time is really not important in many of those cultures. And this was a culture in Africa where this took place. Time is not important. The people, the occasion, the relationships are more important in those cultures. And so anyway, in a third world tropical country, there are things that we deal with. I remember when we had groups come to El Salvador, we'd be in the country, and there were rafters that were exposed that were just simply uh, 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 tree limbs that they took and built. And I remember remember when we had North American groups there of young ladies like you, and I would look up in the rafters and watch the raft that was about a foot long climb along the rafter right over the heads of the girls, and I prayed, oh God, don't let them raise their sight. Because if they did, it would have been like the squirrel that went berserk in Pascagoula, Mississippi. 
Hallelujah. It would be like they would be shouting, but it wouldn't be the Holy Ghost. Well, it was kind of a thing like that in Africa. When that day everybody arrived late, the church finally was full, and all of a sudden somebody in the church yelled, Snake! And they looked up in the rafters, and there was a snake that was several feet long. And I want you to know, in that culture, those folks do not like snakes. And they all ran out of the building, and there sat the missionary, Nick Sisko. And he thought, there is no way we'll ever get this back. There is no way that we'll ever have a good altar service. Hallelujah. There's no way that it would happen. But I want you to know the situation looked doomed. And when the snake appeared, until... I said the situation looked bad when all the people ran out of the building until... I said the situation looked uncontrollable when the people screamed until, until they got him back in. He picked up the Word of God, and Nick Sisko began to preach the power of the Word of God. Hallelujah. It was an until moment. I said it was an until moment. It was a moment that we couldn't fix, but I want you to know God's able to fix it. It's a God moment. Would you raise your hands and thank God for it right now? I love you, Jesus. 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 Hallelujah. 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 It was until God's anointed word was went forth, and he began to wow all of those that were there testifies missionary Cisco. And at the end of that service, Sister Burton, missionary Cisco made an altar call. And 25 people came down that needed to be filled with the Holy Ghost. And a few moments after that, hallelujah, 23 of them went back to, the, uh, to their seats saying that they had spoken in tongues for the very first time. I want you to know that's an until moment. I've come to tell you today, Calvary, hallelujah, thank God for the building. Thank God for the beautiful music. Thank God for everything we're doing. But I want an until moment today. I want God to touch me and show me that when it looks bad, there can be an until moment. I said when it looks bad, there can be an until moment. Would you raise your hands and thank God Thank God for that? Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Well, I want you to know I want to preach about until, and I'm not going to preach long. I do assure you I'm not looking at my clock because I'll get nervous. But I will not preach more than three hours. Well, some of you smile, but some of you got your purse and are ready to go home. Hallelujah. I'm not going to preach that long, but I want to preach about until. Have you ever noticed sometimes, Pastor, that things can look bad? Have you ever noticed sometimes that, that at night when you wake up and begin to be, think about things that are going on? I'm not going to tell you what's going on in my life, but honestly, last night I had one of those moments for something that is going on. I woke up and I began to think about it, and I thought, how in the world are we going to take care of it? And it was one of those moments, excuse me, hallelujah, that things are just going on and it seems hopeless. It's like in the scripture, why do the evil prosper? Why do bad things happen to good people and good things happen to bad people? Why does that happen? It's not fair. And as we used to say when I was a kid, guess I'll eat a worm. A fat one, a skinny one. Have you ever heard that? An ooshy one, a gooshy one. I'll just eat a worm. Or when I was in Bible college, I didn't go to ABI. I apologize. Please forgive me. Hallelujah. But I want you to know we used to sing happy birthday, happy birthday, people dying everywhere, sin and sorrow fill the air, but happy birthday. Have you ever felt that way? I was kind of amazed at Brother Bernard the other day. We celebrated his birthday at the Global Council just about 10 days ago or so, or maybe two weeks ago in Sri Lanka, and he talked about that at his birthday because we he was there on his uh, whatever birthday it was. Hallelujah. I know how many. But I want you to know that's the way we feel sometimes. Hallelujah. But then, this morning I got up. Thank God for keeping me in a good hotel that had good coffee. And I got up and made a cup of coffee, and I began to talk to God. And I hate to admit that was the order. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. But you know what? You get up and you make a cup of coffee and you get the Word of God out and you begin to read the Word of God and you realize there can be an until moment. I said there can be an until moment. Hallelujah. You know what? I feel the Holy Ghost at Calvary Church today. And I know I'm preaching to somebody that you're going through a rough time. But I've come to tell you, there is an until moment. Let's look in the Word of God in Psalms chapter 73. But as far as verse 2, but as for me, my feet were almost gone. My steps had well nigh slipped, for I was envious at the foolish when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. Their eyes, verse 7, stand out with fatness. Everybody say fat. Hallelujah. Their fatness. Now, I know we don't like to be fat, but in El Salvador, they called me fat. Hallelujah. It's a compliment. Because in El Salvador, when you had enough money back in those days to eat the way you wanted, you were fat. Hallelujah. And I always lost weight on deputation, Brother Moore, but I gained weight when I was there. Hallelujah. Because I love pupusas. Most of you don't know what that is. Hallelujah. They know what arepas are. Hallelujah. From Venezuela, and they didn't bring me any. Hallelujah. But I love the food. In fact, I was just there a week with my family and probably gave five pounds. But you know, there it says, for they stand out with fatness. They have more than heart could wish. They are corrupt. They speak wickedly concerning oppression. They speak loftily. Have you ever heard that? The wicked? Hallelujah. They, are, they set their mouth against the heavens and their tongue walketh through the earth. Behold, these are the ungodly. My good, you talk about eating a worm. You talk about happy birthday. Behold, these are the ungodly who prosper in the world. They increase in riches. Verily, I have cleansed my heart in vain and washed my hands in innocency. For all the day long have I been plagued and chastened every morning. Anybody ever feel that way? Oh, I'm sorry. Y'all are real spiritual. You never have those days. We're just all, you know, just floating in the crowds. No, I know we all have those days. How, when I thought to know this, it was too painful for me. I said, when I thought to do this, it just about killed me when I thought about all that. But I want you to notice in verse 17, put it up there, until, until I went into the sanctuary of God, then understood I therein. I want you to know we're not at the back of the book yet. I said, we're not at the end of this story yet because I've read the back of the book and we win. I said, I've read the back of the book and I'm going to walk on streets of gold. I said, I've read the back of the book and we're going to reach Israel and Palestine in the name of Jesus. Uh, come on, somebody, would you raise your hands and would you worship God? Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah, verse 22. So foolish was I and ignorant. I was as a beast before thee. Nevertheless, I'm content with thee, thou hast holden me by my right hand. You know what? I'm not by myself. I said, I'm not by myself. I know I'm an executive, but I feel like I'm going to have an apostolic Pentecostal fit. Oh, I'm sorry. This is such a beautiful building. No, you know what? I've come to tell you. I remember I was at this church 47 years ago. I got the Holy Ghost in Heron, Illinois, and I remember when Brother and Sister Sherry were our pastor, and they brought us through here on our way to the youth convention in Charleston, West Virginia, and I visited this church when you were starting. No, we didn't have a building like this. No, we didn't have everything we've got. But you know what? We had an until moment. We had a power of the Holy Ghost. And you know what? That's what we've got to have. I said that's what we've got to have. Let's raise our hands and praise him. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Verse 24, thou shalt guide me with thy counsel and afterward receive me to glory. Whom have I in heaven but thee? and there is none upon the earth that I desire beside thee. 
I said, there's none on this earth that I desire beside thee. I miss my wife. She went to Austin yesterday for Brother Bernard's daughter's wedding, and there she is, and I'm here. Hallelujah. But I've got news for you. I love my wife, but I don't desire my wife first. I desire the touch of the Holy Ghost. I desire to have Jesus in my life. Would you raise your hands if you feel that way? God, I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. Oh, God, I pray that you would touch and that you would help us right now, God, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Please listen to me today. Folks, I feel the Holy Ghost here right now. The Bible says in the last verse that I will read, my flesh and my heart faileth, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. you feel that way, would you raise your hands and make a commitment to him right now? I love you, Jesus. 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 Hallelujah. 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 I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. Come on, folks. Would you listen to me? I'm going to I'm going to get off my notes some up there and just follow me. Hallelujah. But yesterday I received an email from a missionary that had to resign because they had a little girl that's mentally challenged. And as I read that email, I thought, can I be honest? I can't give any more details because as some of you know who I'm talking about, but please don't say. But I read that and I thought, how unfair. They were doing such a great job and they were overseas and the baby was born there and now she's got a syndrome that they say there's no healing for. And as he told me, he said, Brother Howe, and he didn't have to write me. He doesn't have to give me a monthly report anymore. And he said, my heart's on the mission field. I wish I could be there. Can I tell you, I don't understand it, Brother Shirley. I don't understand how those things happen. But I want you to know, God is in charge. And I'm preaching to somebody today. I don't know what you're going through. I know it's Christmas time. I know it's joy to the world. I know it's decorate the trees and do all that. But I want to, I feel in the Holy Ghost that God gave me this message for somebody here. And you're going through a difficult situation. And I know it's Mission Sunday. But what good would it do for me to raise a million dollars here right now if somebody walks out that door without hope in Jesus Christ? Did you hear what I said? And I mean that. I mean that. And pastor, to juggle, to try to do a, a, a commitment and also see somebody touch. But I want you to know if you're here today and you're discouraged, if you're about ready to throw in the towel, don't you do it. I said, don't you do it. There's an until moment for you. I said, there's an until moment for you. Come on, raise your hands and praise him right now. Begin to magnify him. Hallelujah. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. In John chapter 9, we read of a blind man, blind from birth. I don't know what happened. They probably, his parents were probably, I just uh, disobeyed my word. I looked at my watch. Hallelujah. Is it all right? Are you with me? Are you with me? Hallelujah. I want you to know that blind man was blind from birth. His mom and dad probably felt guilty because of it. And I can't give you the details, but our youngest daughter was born with a situation where my wife and I basically blamed ourselves for a while and we didn't know what was going to happen. But the Bible says that Jesus came by and he spit on the ground and he put it in the guy's eyes and he told him to go to the pool and wash and he did. And the Pharisees were upset. I said the Pharisees were upset. Can you imagine parents that get upset when their kids give their life to God? Can you imagine? My mama used to punish me by not allowing me to go to church because she thought I went for the girls. And it was a good side benefit. Hallelujah. <laughs> Holily speaking, hallelujah. 
But I want you to know that's not the reason my mom would punish me by not allowing me to go to church. Hallelujah. But you know, there are people that feel that. And the Pharisees were upset. So they called the neighbors of the blind man. And they said, what's going on? And the neighbors said, well, you know what? We don't know a whole lot. We just simply know he was blind. We just simply know he sat by the way begging. We just simply know he was a burden on his family. Until. Until. I said until. You know what? Somebody needs an until moment today. Don't just sit there. Hallelujah. As my pastor in Jackson, Mississippi says, like a mule looking at a gate. They don't understand that. You understand that, don't you? A mule looking at a gate. No, no, don't do that. It's time to worship God. You got a problem? Worship God. I said, you got something you don't know what's going to happen? You don't feel like dancing? Dance anyway. I said, you don't feel like clapping? Clap anyway. You don't feel like running? Run anyway. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. They called his parents. Come on in here, folks. We're doing an FBI investigation. Hallelujah. We want to know what's going on, the Pharisees said. Hallelujah. What's going on? And all they said, well, all we know is he was a burden to us. All we know is he couldn't see. All we know is he begged. And all we had to do was take care of him. All we know is he had no hope. All we know is he could not help us. We had to do so much for him. Until. Until. I said, until a man by the name of Jesus came by. A man by the name of Jesus came by. Can I tell you something? My mama was married five times. She and her sisters were married 20 times. My stepfather was an alcoholic. I slept in the car at night to stay out of the reach of my drunken stepfather. But you know what? I thank God today I've been married 42 years. I thank God today, my son and his wife, pastor in Columbus, Ohio. I thank God that my daughter and son-in-law are pastoring in in, uh, Noblesville, Indiana, or Fishers. Hallelujah. I'm glad that my daughter Amy and her husband are starting deputation as missionaries to Latvia. There was no hope for me, son. There was no hope for me. Psychologists and sociologists would have told me that's the road that I was going to go down. But you know what? Something happened. I said I was lost. And was found. That's right. I was lost. Until. Until. Hallelujah. (laughs) Hallelujah. I was lost until. Man, that guy's got a preacher's voice. Hallelujah. Hallelujah until. Come on, somebody. The devil's told you you can't make it. The devil's told you you won't have victory. But I've come to tell you there's an until moment today. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Come on, let's worship him right now. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. So they called the man. They said, come in here, sir. He said, this is the one that healed you, has not gone through our procedure. My God, can you imagine, Brother Basley? Gone through our procedure. Can you imagine, Brother Moore? You know what the procedure's like. Hallelujah. I just got an email yesterday from somebody said, can't we rush that procedure? And I forwarded it to somebody, and they emailed back and said, I'm not willing. Hallelujah. Procedure. Can you imagine that we would violate a procedure? You don't think we've got them? Ask him. Hallelujah. He did not follow our procedure. He didn't fulfill our criteria. He did not have our authorization to heal you, sir. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He did it on the Sabbath. He didn't even have a tie on probably. Probably didn't have his hair put up. Hallelujah. Well, he wasn't supposed to. Hallelujah. Didn't have a head covering on. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? He didn't have a card in his pocket. 
He didn't have our authorization. But you know what? The man that was formerly blind, I said the man that was formerly blind, he looked at him and said, you know what? Whether he's a sinner, I don't know. Whether he's a sinner or not, and hasn't gone through your procedure, I know. I do not know. I just simply know I was blind until. I was blind until he touched me. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. And then the Bible says, they said in verse 34, they answered and said unto him, Thou wast altogether born in sins. And dost does thou teach us? And they cast him out. In modern day language, they said, who in the world do you think you are? We've got the degrees. We went through the graduation ceremony. We had the rabbi lay his hands on us. And who do you think you are? He said, I don't know. Hallelujah. But all I simply know, I'm not a theologian. I just simply know I was lost and blind. I was lost and I was blind until he touched me. Aren't you glad the Lord touched you? I said, anybody glad here that the Lord touched you? Anybody glad that Jesus came and touched you? Would you raise your hands and worship God? We love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I come today to tell you, Jesus is not looking for theologians to touch those that need teaching and training in our church educational programs. He's looking for someone that's blind. He's looking for someone that's in a rough situation. He's looking for someone that is blind and has come this morning broken and in need, that does not know what to do, that is facing seemingly insurmountable problems, and you need an until moment. God, I pray right now for every individual that's in this place. I pray, God, that you would reach out and that you would touch every person that is here. God, in the name of Jesus, I pray that you would reach out and touch right now. I ask, God, that you would bless. Because, you see, put the first picture up. Hallelujah. It was last week in El Salvador. I said it was last week in El Salvador in that meeting right there that a man came in that wheelchair. One week ago today, I was there in the largest stadium in the country. He came, not able to walk. Next picture. Hallelujah. Next picture. But there he is right there standing up, dancing, and worshiping the name of the Lord Jesus Christ because he was lame until he began to worship God and God touched him and healed him. Hallelujah. 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 What wheelchair are you in today? What situation are you facing? I come to tell you, Jesus is able to touch you right now. Saints of God, would you raise your hands and pray for every person that's in this building right now? God, I'm asking you for every person right now. In the name of Jesus. 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 Name of Jesus I'm asking you to reach out and touch right Right now, God, I'm asking you to reach out and bless in the name of Jesus, 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 in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm not going to preach a lot longer. Hallelujah. But would you please cry out for somebody right now? There's somebody sitting in this room right now that needs a touch of God. I, I've come to tell you, I don't come to condemn you. I come to tell you that God loves you. You say you don't know what's going on in my life. I don't need to know what's going on in your life because I'm not God, but he knows and he loves you. I said he knows and he loves you and he's here to touch you. Come on, folks, pray for somebody. Reach out to God right now for somebody that's in this room. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. God, I pray for every individual right now. I pray for every individual right now. Uh, if you feel led, just reach over and lay your hand on somebody and pray for them right now. You don't know what they're going through, but Brother, pa Brother Pasley, I know God gave me this message for this morning. I know God gave me this message for somebody right now. 
Hallelujah. Don't you throw in the towel. I don't know what's in your life, but I've come to tell you, God is able to forgive you. I said God is able to take care of it. Don't you dare quit worshiping God. Come on, he loves you, sir. Come on, he loves you, my brother. He loves you, my sister, right now. Come on, let's call out upon the name. The Holy Ghost is moving right now. God, I love you, Jesus. 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 Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Arianda la Maria Satala. Come on, hallelujah. Come on, let's worship him right now. God, I love you, Jesus. Come on. I'm not done yet. I mean, if you have to leave, that's fine. But I promise I'm not going to impose upon your time. But God is moving right now. I said God is touching someone right now. In the name of Jesus. 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 Come on. Let's worship him for a moment. Let's worship him. God is moving. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. God, in your name right now, I pray for my sister. I pray that you'll touch her right now. God, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. God, I love you, Jesus. 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 Jesus. 